Welcome to this Prentice Hall video on service operations management. Scott, the ball. Ultimately, all business operations can be characterized as processes, which are procedures to get work done. Even though production is founded around procedures, those procedures vary dramatically in their structure and complexity. Some procedures are rigidly structured and tell employees and customers exactly what each step should be. Other procedures are very flexible, allowing the procedure execution to vary dramatically over time. As a customer, I don't know if I like being forced into an extremely rigid procedure, but I also don't want to have a completely random service experience. Fortunately, there are many degrees of flexibility for companies to choose from. In this segment, we'll consider these types of process design issues in our fitness center. One feature that is common to all business operations is that they involve processes. These are the procedures for converting inputs into outputs. Process design involves making numerous decisions about how the processes should function. One issue of process design is complexity. Complex processes involve many steps and may include many contingencies. An advantage of simple processes is fewer opportunities for error. Another issue of process design is the use of automation and technology. Automated processes can be efficient, but often lack the flexibility of processes that rely more heavily on labor. This concept of process flexibility is another key element in process design. In manufacturing, flexibility means the ability to produce different items in a particular facility. Some facilities are highly flexible and can produce a wide variety of products. For example, Dell can assemble many different computer products in its plants and reconfigure the plant floor as demand dictates. Others, such as this rock quarry, have very structured processes. The rock is transported from the mine to stationary crushers in the process of creating materials for use in roadway surfaces. In service organizations, we also have the process flexibility issue. Standard services, such as restaurants, have well-defined procedures. In this case, the company often controls the process. This can result in operational efficiency. And such a structured process can be easily described with a flowchart. In other cases, the process can be quite flexible. Here, the procedures can be divergent. This means that the steps of the procedure can vary dramatically based upon the judgment of employees or customers. For example, in retailing, the process steps are determined by customers. They can choose to shop for shoes first than clothing. The only thing standard from one customer to the next is that they all enter and they all pay before leaving with purchases. Everything else is up to the customer. Such loosely defined self-serve processes can be difficult to describe with a flowchart. Other divergent processes are controlled by employee judgment. For example, in a health facility, every customer may have a unique process based on health needs. The process is determined by employees who tell patients what areas of the facility they need to visit. Now let's consider process design in a fitness center setting. One example of a process is the development of personal training programs. A fitness center may employ fitness consultants to set customers up on a personalized training program. Is it best for this fitness consulting process to be company controlled? customer controlled or employee controlled. If the organization wants control, managers will develop standard procedures and forms and train employees in their use. If management thinks that customers should control the process, they would instruct personal trainers to seek out and comply with customer wishes. If management wants employees to control the process, they may hire employees with education or experience in sports training. The question is, what are advantages and disadvantages of each approach in the personal training process? An advantage of a highly structured fitness consulting process is that it will be very consistent from one customer to the next. The company can design the very best process and instruct employees in each step of the process. A disadvantage of this highly structured approach is that customer needs can vary dramatically, even if the process does not. What might be an ideal fitness program for one customer might be inadequate for another. 
The primary advantage of a customer control process is that it allows customers to get any type of fitness program they want. A disadvantage is that customers may not have enough knowledge to know what type of program would be best for their needs. Somewhat in between the rigidity of the organization control and the flexibility of customer control is a fitness consulting process controlled by employees. An advantage of the employee control process is that employees adjust a fitness program to meet individual customer needs. At the same time, they can maintain a desired level of consistency from one customer to the next. The disadvantage of this approach is that it can be the most costly in terms of labor and training. Employees need to possess sufficient expertise to use good judgment in guiding the consulting process. At Miami University's Recreational Sports Center, management has chosen to hire highly trained employees that are skilled at managing the process. This allows them to provide excellent fitness advice that meets the needs of individual customers.